Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well because today we're talking about music. Today we're taking a look at Fresh Maggots from 1971. So they're not that fresh anymore. Now if you hear the name Fresh Maggots, do you think of uh, English psychedelic folk rock? Probably not. You probably think of, you know, Norwegian death metal or something. But that's what you get on here. You get what was for the most part a one and done band. Uh, yeah, again in 2020 they put out something new. Uh, from Warwickshire, England. Um, it's a duo, two people. You have Lee Dolphin, who plays acoustic guitar, and Mick Burgoyne, apologies if those names aren't pronounced correctly, on electric guitar, glockenspiel, tambourine, violin, and tin whistle. Um, it was put out on RCA Records when the two of them were 19 years old. They met, uh, they were journalist students at school and, and found a passion for folk music together and made a duo and put this out. Uh, it's billed generally as being psychedelic folk. I don't know if I would, I'd say it's more folk done by people who are on psychedelics. Uh, I mean, if you look at that cover, I do think that kind of sums up the sound of this. Like it's kind of murky and something's a bit off, like it's pleasant, but there's something kind of bubbling under the surface that's sort of like, we shouldn't be here. It's a really pretty scene. It's like a Ralph Bakshi movie, like, this is really pleasant, but something is really off, you know? Um, that's how I describe it. I mean, some parts are psychedelic. It's mostly contemporary folk with a lot of strings. I get a lot of Donovan vibes, like that sort of very gentle, sing-songy, peace and love kind of uh, acoustic-y folk stuff. But then once in a while, some of the arrangements are sort of psychedelic. A number of the tracks have like a... a not heavy fuzzed out, but a fuzzed out electric guitar, kind of soloing over top for extended periods. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty contemporary stuff. I think a lot of the mystique around this band, one, is that um, they were a one and done band for the longest time. As well, the album itself didn't, I mean, it was delayed. It was meant to come out in 1971, or 1970, came out in 71. Uh, didn't really get promoted a lot. And I think because of that, it didn't sell a lot, so it's kind of got that hidden gem mystique as well. Um, so I think people want to lump it into something more than it is. It is really cool. It's definitely more of like a mood setter. Like, it, it's got a real specific vibe to it, and if you're into it, you're into it, and you can you can kind of feel it. But it's you're listening to it more for the, the feeling that it can give you more than the, the musicianship and the lyrics. The lyrics are also... Feel like something written by two 19 year olds on psychedelics uh for better and for worse like they're pretty uh they're not the best they're not the worst but they're not the best but they're they're trying they're trying and, and god god love them they're trying um so like i said came out in 1971 on rca records this is a uh, 2003 uh reissue on progressive line a 24-bit digitally remastered version you can find this online and physical copies now. There's been some more recent reissues. It's called Fresh Maggots Hatched. Uh, it's the exact same track listing with some bonus and some live tracks. But up until a couple years ago, this it wasn't put out a lot. Like this version is from Australia. There's a few other European releases. Um, but it was more just individual tracks here and there being being pulled out for compilations. So what do you got on here? You got a number of songs. You got the Dole song about the Dole. Um, which is probably the first bit you're like, okay, there's some some heaviness to this album And then you get the follow-up of Rosemary Hill, which is the big hit The song from this album that's on other compilations uh, and that's much more Pretty sounding with some string arrangements contemporary folk kind of thing um, What else you got on here? You got Quickie, which is Quickie? It's like an upbeat you know, ballady, not ballad, upbeat, uh, folk jam kind of thing. Uh, Everyone's Gone to War. That's probably where I noticed the lyrics being at their, their most dreadful and saccharine. And you're like, it's anti-war in, uh, in the most painful of ways. In a way that I felt like I should have gone to war. Uh, when She Laughs, that's actually a nice one. I like in When She Laughs, that's nice. Spring is probably my second favorite track on this album. Um, it's again a very kind of pretty arrangement-y kind of tune. I like it a lot. What else we got on here? Uh, the balloon song, Guzz Up, Who's to Die, Who's to Die. 
is another anti-war song that might make you think uh, that should have been me. Uh, and then Elizabeth R. and Frustration. Elizabeth R. and Frustration are really nice because they sort of flow into each other. Um, some people bill this as progressive folk. I do not. Uh, I think all these tracks are very typical lengths for folk songs. Uh, the last one being six minutes. You can kind of clump those two together to get a lengthier track with some changes. But for the most part, like I said at the top, this is not psychedelic folk for the most part. It's folk being done by people on psychedelics. And if that appeals to you, like if you look at this cover again, I think this cover really, really gives you a good idea of what this sounds like. Like the colors are kind of off, but it's a pretty scene. It's two, you know, young people jumping into the lake, but like maybe it's mud, you know, maybe there's uh, an evil fairy just off site watching them. It's, it's a real vibe, this album. It's pretty cool in that way. But I do think it's worth checking out uh, because it, it is mostly a one and done band. It's one of those gems within music that you know you get the whispers about. And I think it's worth listening to um, and checking out for people that are like, what is what's weird? You know, what is weird and what's something I may have not heard? And this is weird and something you may have not heard. And it's available online. It's available physically uh, more places now than before. Um, so it's not too hard to find the Hatch version, which is probably the recommended version. This one just has the, the standardized track listings, so you got 11 tracks there. Um, I think there's like uh, a single, the, the, a song called The Car Song that they put out as a single, and then um, four or five live tracks as well. But check it out. Fresh Maggots, self-titled from 1971. Fresh Maggots. Not Norwegian death metal. It should be. Cover band idea. Moldy Meg? I don't know. Anyway, check it out. I had a great time listening to this, and I hope you do as well. It's totally worth checking out. Have a great day.